more macro photography tips for beginners and my first video of 2022. Now, a few weeks ago, I put out a video called Macro for Beginners on a Budget. That video got some really great reactions, lots of views, and many of you left comments asking for a follow-up video. Well, here it is. Welcome to the Photogenius channel. Hi, Paul here from Photo Genius. Welcome to my channel where I post regular photography tutorials, all designed to help you get more from your digital camera. So if you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing. This week's video is all about macro photography and is a follow up to a video that I posted just before Christmas, which was a beginner's guide to macro photography on a budget. And in that video, I showed you how to do macro photography using extension tubes. Now today is a follow on to this video, but this time I'm shooting outside. I have many of you requesting this. So I'm here today at the beautiful Botanic Gardens and I'm using a Nikon D3500 and a Canon 1500 T7. Now on these cameras, I'm using the standard 18 to 55 millimeter kit lenses. So nothing fancy, no macro lenses, but I am once again using the extension tubes. So I hope you enjoy the video. Stick around, it's gonna be a lot of fun. This is one of Australia's premier subtropical botanic gardens, featuring native and exotic plants and flowers, a tropical rainforest, lagoon, an absolutely stunning Japanese garden, and of course, plenty of wildlife. Located just a few kilometers from the city center, the botanic gardens are well worth a visit if you find yourself in Brisbane. So for my day of macro photography at the Botanic Gardens, I chose to take along two cameras, a Canon T7, which here in Australia is known as the 1500D, also a Nikon D3500, and these are both entry level cameras and perfect for beginners. Now on each camera, I was using the kit lens, which is the standard 18 to 55 millimeter lens, and I didn't have a macro lens. And that might seem a bit strange, but I don't actually own a macro lens. So how was I able to take amazing macro photos? Well, I was using extension tubes like these. Using these, you can effectively turn a standard lens into a macro lens. Macro extension tubes usually come as a set and are available in different sizes. The extension tube sits between the camera and the lens. This extends the focal length of the lens, making it ideal for macro photography. And of course, if you want to learn more about how this works, check out my previous video, link in the description below. So as you can see, macro extension tubes are a very cost effective way of taking macro photos. Now, if you want more details on the extension tubes that are featured in this video, I've added a link in the description below. And of course, if you're watching this video and you have a macro lens, I hope you'll stick around and enjoy the video as well, because any tips that I share in this video are gonna to apply to you if you've got a macro lens or you're using extension tubes. So first stop of the day was the cactus area. I really love the variety of shapes, spikes and textures and got a couple of images that I really like. But I can't decide on color or monochrome for this one. Which one do you prefer? Now taking macro photos outdoors is very different to taking macro photos indoors in a controlled environment because there's going to be things that are out of your control that are going to affect your camera settings, the way you take a picture and possibly your end result. Now two factors in particular are of course wind and changing light. So let's address these. Now taking a picture of a flower may sound simple enough, but even with the slightest breeze, a flower becomes a moving subject. And this can lead to blurry photos, which of course we don't want. So the solution here is to use a faster shutter speed. The faster the shutter can open and then close again, the better. And I also needed to factor in my movements as well, because for my day of macro photography, I chose not to use a tripod. So not only was the flower moving gently in the wind, I was also hand holding the camera and there's some movement there as well. So I decided that I would shoot at no less than one two hundredth of a second, if possible, even faster. 
Now, as I mentioned a moment ago, taking photos outdoors can be tricky because of changing light. It might be sunny one moment, cloudy the next. So the light is constantly changing. Now, whilst I'm a big fan of shooting in the manual mode, sometimes it's good to use the camera's priority modes because then the camera helps you out, allowing you more time to concentrate on nailing the shot and making sure your focus is spot on and things like that. These are things that are incredibly important when doing macro photography. Now, there's two priority modes on the cameras, shutter priority and aperture priority. And for my macro photos, I actually chose to use aperture priority and I'll tell you why in just a moment. So now I want to talk about something called depth of field. Here is an image that I shot with the Canon camera using the macro extension tubes. And in this image, the depth of field is incredibly shallow. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about and you don't know what depth of field is, let me just briefly explain to you the basics because it plays a really big part when it comes to macro photography. So here is our subject, a tiny fly. Here, of course, is the camera, and this is the point at which I am focusing. Now, the point of focus is where we can draw a line, and this is called the plane of focus and runs parallel to the camera. Anything along this line should also be in focus. Here we now have our depth of field. Now this is an area in which the subject or scene is acceptably sharp and in focus. And as you can see with macro photography, it's a very small area. This is called a shallow depth of field. Take a look at this image and you can see just how shallow the depth of field is. The foreground is out of focus, the background is out of focus. And if we zoom in, you can clearly see just how little is actually in focus. For example, look at the legs of the fly closest to the camera compared to those further away. Here, depth of field is just a few millimeters. Depth of field is affected by the size of the aperture within the lens. The smaller we can make the aperture, the greater the depth of field will be and the more of our subject will be in focus. Now, most dedicated macro lenses will have the ability to open the aperture much wider than you'll find in a standard kit lens. But this is sometimes where people go wrong. Just because you have a macro lens that has a wide aperture, let's say f2.8, for example, it doesn't mean you should shoot at f2.8 because we've just learned that the wider the aperture, the more shallow the depth of field. And with macro photography, this isn't always ideal. So instead of shooting at f2.8, close the aperture down a touch for often better results. Now, before we take a look at some more macro photos and I share with you the camera settings that I used, I wanna tell you about a very special offer from Skillshare who are supporters of the Photogenius channel and have kindly sponsored this video. Skillshare is an online learning community featuring thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves to learn, explore new ideas and discover new skills. For example, using a course on Skillshare, I was able to create this animated graphic you see here and at the beginning of my videos. It was really easy to find a suitable class which was simple to follow and within an hour, I had created my own lower thirds graphic. And as a photographer and content creator on YouTube, I'm always keen to learn new skills. So I've been enjoying YouTube tips from MKBHD and you can too because the first 1,000 people to use the link in the video description below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. With new premium classes added every week covering a range of topics including graphic design, illustration, music, photography, web design and much, much more. Plus, it's all ad free. So make sure you don't miss out. All you need to do is click on the link below this video to improve your creative skills with Skillshare. When taking macro photos, you can use whichever camera mode you like, but let me just clarify my reasons for using the aperture priority mode. Now, aperture priority is selected using the camera's mode dial on the top of the camera, and depending on the camera, this is either the letter A or AV. That stands for aperture value. Now, I wanted to control the aperture because as we've learned in this video, aperture can greatly affect depth of field and how much of the image is in focus. 
and I was happy for the camera to look after the shutter speed. All I needed to do was keep my eye on it and make sure that the camera selected a shutter speed that was around 1 200th of a second or higher. If it did dip below this, then I raised the ISO. Now let's talk about bees. Now I must have been a good 15, 20 minutes or so trying to get the perfect shot of a bee in flight. But it is so hard because they just don't stop moving. And look, I've no problem at all showing you my misses because there were plenty of them. I just kept trying and trying and trying and that's all you can do. I did eventually get a shot that I quite liked and I would probably rate this one maybe a seven or eight out of 10. But I've yet to get the perfect bee in flight shot. I'll get it one day, I'll just keep trying. Okay, next, let's talk manual focus. Focusing can be very tricky when you're so close to the subject. And although you can use autofocus, my recommendation would be to manually focus the lens. To do this, you can select manual focus via the switch on the lens. If your lens doesn't have a switch, then you can select manual focus using the camera. So now the autofocus is turned off. You simply rotate the focus ring on the lens until the subject is in focus. Now a really good tip when doing macro photography is to gently move the camera back and forth. By moving the camera back and forth, you're also moving the plane of focus. It took some patience, but after a few minutes, I was able to get some great shots of this tiny fly. The first shot has the aperture at 5.6. This second image I feel is better and sharper with the aperture at f8. Now I spent the best part of a day walking around the botanic gardens, taking photos and enjoying nature. And it was late in the afternoon when I was about to leave that I got talking to one of the groundsmen. And I'm really glad I did because they gave me a great tip. Outside of the gardens, near the car park, there were some water lily ponds. And I'm really glad I checked them out because I got some of my favourite photos of the day there. Let me show you. Now to think, I could have gone home early and completely missed this location, so I'm really glad that I stuck around. I absolutely love the colours of these amazing flowers, and this dragonfly did its absolute best to avoid me, but I persevered and managed to grab this really cool shot. But the best was yet to come, because hidden amongst the lily pads and the flowers were some really tiny green frogs. These final images I was especially happy to get, and this was the perfect way to wrap up my day. Now my goal for the day had been to have a great day out taking photos, but also to come away with maybe four or five images that I could share with you in this week's video. But actually I ended up coming away with about 10 good images that I was really pleased with. So all up, a great day of macro photography. Now what was your favourite image? Let me know in the comment section down below. I'd like to say a big thank you for watching the video and for supporting my channel. And of course, a big thank you to Skillshare for supporting my channel and sponsoring this week's video. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed. And I hope to see you again sometime soon. See ya. Bye.